Vic presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks VapoRub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner in a request performance of Paramount's gripping motion picture, Till We Meet Again, which stars Ray Milland and Barbara Britton and will soon be shown at your favorite theater. Your votes for this superb Paramount picture have been running neck and neck with votes for the love story of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning, and we will bring you this other fine play next Sunday. You know, more and more millions of people are using Vicks Vaprinol nose drops to relieve distress of head colds. Benefit by their experience. And now, act one of Till We Meet Again. Many stories have come and will continue to come out of France concerning those black days of Nazi occupation. Till We Meet Again is one that we think will become immortal. Sister Clotilde was a young novice in a convent in a small French village. The Nazis had begun to take quite an interest in the convent because they suspected the nuns might be helping prisoners of war to escape. Sister Clotilde knew nothing of this. But one day, while she was scrubbing the basement floor under the chapel, a sudden sound in the dimly lit room made her turn around. And there... Hello there. Oh! Don't go. I was told I'd find a man here, uh, an old chap named Cabot. I'm sorry, but I can't possibly talk to you. Look, that's very important. I'm an American aviator. I flew over here to get special information gathered for the Allies by French patriots. I got my information, but my plane was shot down as I took off and I bailed out. I was told if I had any trouble in this region to look up Cabot. Do you know him? Yes, he's a gardener. I'll tell the Mother Superior you're here. It will be up to her whether you'll see Cabot. Please hurry. Yes, I will. <laughs> I'll go at once, Sister Clotilde. You're going to see him, Mother Superior? Yes, of course. He's not the first we've helped. I don't understand. This is a convent. We're supposed to dedicate our lives to God and his work. I don't want to have anything to do with the world. I want peace. I know what you want, Sister Clotilde. You want to be comfortable. Religion is not meant to deaden you to life, but to awaken you. Well, I will see the aviator. In the meanwhile, will you please go out in the yard and stay with the children? I have been told we are to have a visit this afternoon from Major Krupp of the Third Reich. Well, isn't this a pretty sight? The nun at her knitting, the children playing. Ah, how remote the war seems from here. Mm, sister? If you will permit me, Major Krupp, these young sisters are not accustomed to contact with the world, especially with men. It's against the rules. We Germans make our own rules, Mayor Vitrain. You'll make a better collaborationist when you recognize that. Some of these children seem quite grown. Hmm. Mayor Vitrain, oui? if this American aviator is not found by tomorrow, we'll take these three of these older girls. Oh, no! It's really a splendid idea. Good day, sister. Come on, Vitry. Major Krupp. Yes? This American. If anyone knew where he was, if he should give himself up, the girls, you wouldn't take them? If he should give himself up. Thank you for your information, sister. <laughs> If he should give himself up. Well, he can't take those girls. They are wards of the church in the state. He said it only to frighten you, to make you say just what you did. Your if was all he needed. Come here, my child. Tell me, of what are you afraid? You know so little of that world outside, and yet you find it so terrifying. Perhaps before accepting you as a novice, I should have made you go back into it for a time. Are you sure that this life is for you? 
Remember, you are still a novice, bound by no vows. A novice is always free to leave. No, no. This is the only world I ever want to know. I have never felt that I was only a novice. I made my vows to myself many years ago, and I... I have tried to be everything that you wish me to be, haven't I? Yes, but you have an inclination to pride, Sister Clotilde. You're proud that you're safe. Proud that life can never touch you. But why should it? The crucifix is our symbol, Sister Clotilde. We cannot ask to be free of suffering. What you did today was wrong. You have done us great harm. The American is waiting at the windmill for Madame Bouchard. She was to pose as his wife and help him across France. But I have just received word that she has been arrested. I'm so sorry. What will you do? We must find another girl to go. Oh, it's the Germans. They've come to search the convent. They shan't set foot inside this door. Come. They're going to search every building in this village. Oh, not this one. They'll shoot all the lock. Please, Mother Superior, get away from the door. Major Krupp knows I cannot admit anyone without a written order. Mother Superior! Mother Superior! He, he ain't well. Or a German. Mother Superior! <laughs> late. I've been waiting here well over an hour. I'm sorry. I was detained. Come on, they're waiting for you inside. Oh, she finally came, did she? I was detained. Wait a minute. This is not Madame Bouchard. Not Madame Bouchard? It's all right. I've taken Madame Bouchard's place. Where is she? Under arrest. Someone talked. What is your name? Louise. Louise. They've been making arrests. We'll have to get you out of here. Let's see if I have this straight. I'm to pose as Jean de Bray. She is my wife, Madame de Bray. Uh, she needs a wedding ring, doesn't she? I have one right here. Here, Louise. Put this on. Let me put it on. I'm a sentimental kind. Hold out your hand. No, 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 the, the left one. Oh. There you are, Madame de Bray. You look frightened. You sure you can carry this off? Oh, I must. I must. Remember, you're a soldier now. You must obey orders. I know this man is a stranger, but whenever you are in public, he's not a stranger. He's your husband. I will remember. But now you must be on your way. You are to go northeast until you reach the lake. You'll find the cottage a mile back in the woods. You should reach there tomorrow night, and you can rest. Keep off the main roads as much as possible. Good luck to both of you. You'll need it. Come on, Louise. Let's go. very tired. I sit here by the lake a few moments and rest. We've walked all night and most of the day. Thank you. I am tired. Ah, look at that water. <laughs> My little boy was here. He'd want to dive right in. You have a little boy? I sure have. Six years old. He's got blonde hair and blue eyes and <laughs> two front teeth are missing. He's all boy. Smart, too, and strong. Found a box when he was only four. You'd be crazy about him. Full of fun, always mischief, but never anything bad. Crazy about animals. Does he swim well? Does he swim well? <laughs> I'll say he does. I taught him, and I taught my wife, too, and she wasn't much bigger than Johnny is now. You've known her that long? All my life, she was the girl next door back in my hometown. We grew up together, you know. Great American love story. I carried her books to school, bought her ice cream at the corner drugstore. She said she had her eye on me when I was only eight. I never had a chance to look at another girl. Not that I ever wanted to. Went through high school together and then on to state college. Then your parents, they arranged the marriage? No, they weren't enthusiastic about it. We thought we were too young. That's the way to start out. Do everything together. Work together, play together, grow up together. <laughs> you know what she's doing now? No? She's working in the defense plan. She makes them and I fly them. Gosh, I can see her with a monkey wrench in her pocket and a lipstick in the other. Even the war couldn't separate Barbara from her lipstick. I'll never forget the night Johnny was born. I got the car out and sat there honking the horn and... <laughs> You're not going to hold this trip up while you look for a lipstick, are you? She said, I certainly am. I want to look my best the first time he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I could never begin to tell you how I miss her. I miss waking up beside her. I miss her head on my shoulder. Scent of her hair. It's been so long. So? Someday you'll have a real wedding ring on your finger. And you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. But all this talk about marriage, that does not interest me. Shall we go on? The cottage must be up in those woods. Yes, of course. By all means, let us go on. Look! There are some planes coming. Now they're probably up that convoy of trucks we passed. Come on, we better run for the woods. Oh, that explosion was so close. Oh, I don't think I can run. We've got to get out of here. In a couple of minutes, this place won't be healthy for anyone. Come on, come on. Here. Help me get on my feet, will you? Uh, thanks. Your shoulder. You're hurt. It must have been a bomb splinter. But if we can make it to the cottage, I'll be all right. It isn't serious. Here. Let me put my arm around your waist. You can lean on me. We'll take it very slowly. Yes. I'm afraid we'll have to. There said to be food and medicine in the table drawer. I have it. There's some salt and elamite powder. Ah. Some tablets, too. Good. Now you sprinkle the powder on the wound, wherever the skin's broken. Nice. We'll sleep here tonight. Henri said there was a bedroom upstairs. I'll sleep down here on the couch. Headaches. Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing down there on your knees, scrubbing that floor at this hour? I like things clean. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sister? Just a minute. So that's what you are. That's who you are. I thought you seemed familiar before. You're the little sister who was scrubbing the floor back at the convent. Funny I didn't recognize you. But you did look so different in your robes and veil. Why did you leave the convent? I broke a trust. It was the only way I knew to make up for it. Mm-hmm. Convent meant a lot to you, didn't it? Yes. It was like... Like tearing my life out by its roots to leave. I had to do it. Will they take you back? I don't know. I feel lost. I I don't know what I'd do. The outside world has always seemed very frightening to you me. mustn't feel that way. It's quite a wonderful world when you get to know it. I know. I felt that when I was listening to you talk about your wife and your son. Mm -hmm. When I stopped you, it wasn't because I was bored. It was because it somehow hurt me to listen. I don't know why. Well, I don't often talk about Barbara, but that's probably because she's so much a part of me. I can't talk about it. You know, marriage can be the most... Yeah, the most beautiful thing in the world. It's like finding the other self. Lots of little things you remember and think about in marriage. Things that make you laugh or make you cry... Like Barbara trying to be dignified with cold cream on her nose. My finding the morning newspaper with jam on it. Like her slippers. You know, they're always in the wrong place beside the bed and I always trip over them. <laughs> Marriage is having someone to laugh at one moment and run to for comfort the next. To make you feel masculine and superior and protecting while you know all the time that without her you're not so much. Ah... Uh, Someone to believe in, even when you've ceased to believe in yourself. Someone to bring your achievements and your failures back to. Someone who makes an empty house a home. And a home. A haven. Oh, you say all that like a... like a litany. What's that? A kind of prayer. You're right. It is a prayer. It's a prayer and a creed. It's the heart of what most of us are fighting for. You understand? Oh, yes, I do understand. Thank you for helping me understand. Well, do you think you can fix us some breakfast? 
Well, we'll rest here through day, but by night we must be away from here. I shall be sorry to leave here. Yes. Yes, so will I. In just a moment, act two of Till We Meet Again. To suffer with sniffles, sneezes, and nasal stuffings from a cold in the head is a mean experience any time. But right now, with so many lovely spring days to enjoy, a head cold can make you feel especially and unnecessarily miserable. I say unnecessarily miserable because there is an easy way to relieve discomforts of head colds. That's with Vatronol, Vicks Vatronol. All you do is put a few drops in each nostril, and instantly it starts to work right where trouble is to soothe the sniffly, sneezy irritation, help reduce congestion, shrink swollen membranes, and open up the nasal passages to make breathing easier. Yes, Vatronol is wonderfully effective, a specialized nasal medication developed by Vicks for the express purpose of relieving distress of head colds. And moreover, if used in time at the first sniffle or sneeze, Vatronol actually helps prevent many colds from developing. Now just try Vatronol, friends. You'll like the way it quickly relieves distress, and it may save you untold hours of unnecessary head cold misery. Follow directions in the package. Vicks, Vatronol, Nose Drops. And now act two of Till We Meet Again, starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner. Louise and John made their way as best they could for the next two days and nights, doing their best to keep out of sight. And always, just a little way behind them, came Major Krupp and the nervous, unhappy mayor of the village they'd left, Mayor Vitre. On the third night, they arrived at the small coast town that was their destination. They were hungry and took a chance on going to a restaurant to eat. And it was there Vitre came up to them. He was alone, but there was a gun in his hand. Good evening, Sister Clotilde. And you, monsieur, we have not met personally, but... uh... Let me introduce myself. I am the heir of the village from which you escaped and to which you are about to return. You and your companion. Do not try to reach for your gun. Mine will be quicker. You will both precede me through that door. Come on, Louise. Now then, I'm going to telephone to Major Krupp. He's over at the general headquarters right now. I can assure you he will be very glad to see you both. Connect me with the German military headquarters, please. Put down the telephone. You've seen a hand grenade, haven't you, Vitre? Well, put down the phone or I'll pull the pin. I'll blow us both... You... You, you wouldn't... I will if you say another word. Louise, get out through the back door. Run for the station. No. No, I won't leave Get you. out. Hurry. So oh, that's how it is. You can't kill me without killing her. <laughs> and you won't do that. Hello, Major Krupp, please. I'm warning you. Put down that phone. Major Krupp, this is Vitre. I told you if you gave me a free hand, I would catch the... Oh. Hang up the phone, Louise. I'll push him out of sight. All right. Is he... dead? No, no. But the mayor must learn not to take his eyes off an adversary, even when talking to a Nazi major. Come on. We have been expecting you for two days, Lieutenant. The Gestapo is hunting for a couple, a soldier and his wife. So you are no longer a couple. You, Lieutenant, will be Francois Marie, a worker in the fortifications against invasion. There is a big boarding house down at the harbor for the men working on the fortifications. You will both go there. Uh, and you, Mademoiselle Louise, have you ever worked in a kitchen or helped to wait on tables? Oh, yes. I, I used to help. Uh, good. You will be Marie Arlien, a waitress. At a quarter to eleven, Lieutenant, you will leave the dining room. You will go to room 212. There is a trap door in that room. It is directly over the water. At eleven, there will be a motorboat directly under that door. It will take you to safety. And Louise? I will take care of her. At the moment, our one concern is to get you Oh, no, away. she's going with me. I can't leave her. That's not safe for her in France. Well, you will have to decide that later yourselves. You must both change your clothes, and then we will be on our way. As soon as we get there, Louise, you will start waiting on the tables. With that coffee, I have to get back to work. Oui, monsieur. After you have poured the coffee, huh? you will come with me. Mary Trey. Yes, and this time you are not going to escape. You have reached the end of your journey, Sister Clotilde. 
Major Croft is waiting for you. Here is Sister Clotilde, Major Croft. Ah, Sister Clotilde. At last we meet again. Where's the American? You won't answer, huh? All right. Suppose I make a bargain with you. I must have the information which the French underground collected so carefully. I offer you the immense life in exchange for the information. His life? He will never give up the papers. I think he will. To her? Yes, he will. To me. Is it a bargain, Sister Clotilde? I'll give you ten minutes to go to him. You let me go alone? Do you promise to come back? Yes. I promise on the vows I'd hope to make as a nun that I will come back. Very well. I accept your promise, Sister Clotilde. John! John! Let me in! Hello, Louise. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. I, I hurried so. Anything wrong? I remembered it. It's almost time for you to go. I don't want to go without you. You must. It's time for us to say goodbye. Goodbye? What else can we say to each other? There are many things I'd like to say. I can't just come down to thank you and goodbye. But it has. I'll never forget you. I don't want you to. I want you to remember me always. As I shall remember you. What will happen to you? I can't leave without knowing. Where will you go? Where I shall be safe. I promise you. You're still wearing your wedding ring. Did you forget to take it off? No. I didn't forget. But I must take it off now. Let me have it. Yes. In France, a good husband wears a wedding ring. I think you should wear this one. What time is it? Two minutes to eleven. So late. You must hurry. You think it's easy what you're asking me to do? No. And what I'm asking myself to do is not easy either. No matter what we do, nothing will ever be the same again. You know that, don't you? Oh, yes. I know and understand many things I never knew before. When you first told me about your marriage, you made me understand what it meant for a man to have a wife and child. You made me understand what it could mean to a woman to spend her life with a man of her own choosing and a child that belongs to them both. Even though that life is not for me, I shall always be glad when I see a man and woman together that I know a little of what they feel for each other. Oh, I have much to thank you for. Oh, there's the man with the launch. We must raise the trap door. Yes, of course. Howdy, Lieutenant. Goodbye, thank you. And God bless you until we meet again. And God keep you. The door! Open the door, we'll break it down! I will open the door. Where is he? He's gone, and so are the papers. So? You broke your word? No. I promised I would come back. I am here. You know what I'm going to do with you? Kill me. Kill you? You'd enjoy that, wouldn't you? The beautiful martyred heroine standing before the firing squad saying your prayers... Oh, no, Sister Clotilde, that's much too easy. You're a woman, a young woman, and quite a lovely one. The German Reich has use for such women. No, you cannot do that. You wouldn't. Sister Clotilde, you'd have to understand. Don't you know what he intends doing with Science, me? Science, Vitre. Open your mouth once more and you'll be shot. Dark! Take her away! And she out to Poland in the morning! No, I won't let you do it. I won't let you... Put that gun down, Vitre. <laughs> Thank thee. Oh, Lord. Forgive me, Sister Clotilde. It is much better this way. For you, it is much better. I... Thank thee. Oh, Lord. Well, here. 
Here's your ship, Lieutenant. You're safe now. Yeah. I'm safe now. Safe and on your way home. Yeah, on my way home. For all the years I lived, there'll always be a part of my heart. It'll always belong to France. just a moment, a very important message from Victor Jory. For many, many people, spring is the head cold season. And if you're one of those who catch head colds that make you feel miserable with sniffles and sneezes or a stuffy head, you should know how quickly Vicks Vatronol can help you. Just a few drops of Vatronol in each nostril go to work right where trouble is. And in a matter of seconds, this specialized medication spreads through the affected nasal passages and starts bringing welcome relief from distress in three important ways. One, it soothes the irritation. Two, it reduces swollen membranes. Three, it helps relieve congestion and bring such grand comfort in a hurry. Now, get a bottle of Vatronol, friends, and try it. Always keep it handy, ready to use when you catch a sneezy, stuffy cold in the head. Follow directions in the package. Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops. In two weeks, this is Victor Jory, in two weeks on April 8th to be exact, the Matinee Theater will give us closing performance for the season. I want to take this opportunity to thank Vix for making these productions possible, and I also want to thank all of you for your many kind letters of appreciation. We've always tried to bring you the plays you liked best, and we naturally were glad to hear that you enjoyed them. I personally have enjoyed playing in these productions, and I would very much like to bring them to you again in the fall. Even through the summer months now, just how do you feel about it? Do you enjoy the matinee theater? Would you like to have me try to bring you these plays soon again? I'd like to hear from all of you. So please write me, care of Columbia Broadcasting System, New York, 22, New York. Next week, we bring you your request play, The Love Story of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. And on April 8th, our closing performance, we hope to bring you a play that so many of you have asked for. Thank you. Our script today was adapted by Gene Holloway from Paramount's current motion picture, Till We Meet Again, and was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us next week when Vix, the makers of Vix Vatronol, Vix Cough Drops, and Vix Inhaler, brings you another great matinee theater production starring Victor Jory in the love story of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 